I'm very impressed at the speed in which you all raised your hands for some socks. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this afternoon at Dreamforce and choosing us over the airport. We'll be headed there after this if you want to share an Uber. <laughs> it's always good. So we're going to be talking about Einstein bots today and flow, one of my favorite topics to nerd out about. But before we get that far, for your, how many times have you seen this? Couple hundred. Couple hundred this week, forward looking statement. Yes, we're nerds, and I think we know what we're talking about, but don't listen to us. Only buy things based on readily available products and features. All right, so we did say we were going to introduce ourselves. I'm Christy Brown. I'm a senior consultant with Slalom. I am a Salesforce MVP and certified AF. Can I say that right now? Um, and I'm just a big Einstein bot nerd, so happy to hang out with you guys here today. And I am Tracy Hart. I'm a senior administrator for a company called Cockroach Labs. No, I cannot help you with your bug extermination problems, but I can help you with databases if you want to look into that. Um, I am also a Salesforce nerd as well. I love enabling Christy in all of her nerdy pursuits, which is why we're here together today. We fangirl together. All right. So for today's 20 minute session, we are going to talk about supercharging your bot. And we're gonna go through a couple scenarios to kind of give you guys inspiration on what your bots can do. We're gonna go through chatbot announcements, agent availability, and then fi uh, finish it off with any data you want. So Christy, in order to introduce these things to you, I am going to embody the roles of the different end users. Okay. And for this specific one, chatbot announcements, I am your service manager. I think and you'd I'm, be good in that role. I'm drunk with power. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I've been thinking a lot about bots okay. and the announcements that we currently post. And I've been noticing, at least what my teams are telling me, is that customers are not reading those announcements whatsoever. Like the banner is just easy to ignore. And so what ha happens is somebody enters the bot, they've ignored everything that we've said about a maintenance issue or uh, something being down for a while or God forbid our system being down for a while and they go into the bot and they waste my team's time. So how, how can we make that more dynamic? What I feel like I'm hearing as an experienced admin is that you want power to edit the Einstein bot. <laughs> Preferably, yes, I'd like the power, yes. I'm can. not gonna give that to you, oh. but I think we can solve your problem. And we're gonna do that by giving you a really simple custom object, because I don't wanna have to deactivate this bot every time you wanna put a new announcement message in it. We need this to be dynamic, right? But I finally get an object, eh? You do get an object, not gonna name it after you. Super simple. This is called the chatbot announcements. We've got three fields. So Tracy, whenever you need to send out this announcement, all you need to do is create one of these records. You're going to fill in your announcement, remembering that this message is going to be shown in a bot. It should not be five paragraphs long. It should be like a tweet or an X, whatever we're calling no it. No problem, now. no problem. I also know that you're a busy lady, so I'm gonna give this a start time and an expiration time. Otherwise, we know that this would be up till Christmas. You're not gonna come back. Okay, so now that we've got this message made, we need to figure out how to pull this into our bot. Do I, can I get a multi-pick list or no? You Is cannot that, have I a multi-pick list for numerous no, reasons. Okay. All right. Okay, out of the box with an Einstein bot, you get what's called a pre-chat context flow. And that's what we're showing over here on the left. This thing runs at the beginning of a chat. It's going to find and try to match your contact or lead or case. And this is the flow that we're gonna use throughout all three of these scenarios. But for this one, we just need to make one edit. And you'll see over here on the right, we're gonna add a get announcements note to this. So let's look at what that looks like. Super simple. My GIF is ahead of me here. We're going to open our get announcements. Maybe. Here we go. You'll see that we're just looking for active ones. Tracy's going to get power hungry and create all sorts. We only want the active ones and we only want to keep the first one because I don't want to inundate my users with 18 announcements. And then I'm going to save two variables. I want the actual announcement message, of course, but then I'm also going to save the ID of that announcement so that I can actually fill that on the chat transcript later and be able to report on how many times this gets displayed. That is actually very cool. Thank you very much. 
I will give you reporting capability and also spy on you to see how often you use it. Fair. Do you still like it? <laughs> okay, so maybe most important thing out of this whole 20 minutes is this available for output checkbox. And Tracy, I don't know about you, but when I started with Flow years and years and years ago, I would just check both of these because I had no idea what they did. 100%. It took me years before I realized that I didn't have to check both all the time. I think I even like read it in blogs. Just check both of them just in case. You don't need to do that. So available for input means that you can set the value of a variable when the flow is initiated. Likewise, available for output means that you're going to have the value of that variable after the flow finishes so that we can use that in things like the Einstein bot later on. Got it? Yes. Available for sense. output. Yes. OK, so now that we have that checked, we can move on. That's all we need to do in our flow. Now we're going to go into the Einstein bot builder for our next step. And you'll see here I'm highlighted on my pre-chat context flow. And over on the right, you'll see all of my output variables that I'm bringing in from my flow. And I'm going to assign those to a bot variable so that I have them in my bot. Makes sense? So I'm going to assign my message. I'm going to assign my ID. And we'll be done with this. And this is just passing those values from your bot to, or sorry, from your flow to your bot. Now I don't need to use my flow for anything anymore. We're done. That's kind of sad to say. So now, in order to actually use those variables in my bot, we're going to add a rule. And in this rule, I'm saying that if my announcement message variable was set, I'm going to actually redirect this whole chat to a different dialogue. And dialogues in Einstein bots are different components of the conversation. So you have a welcome, you have some actions, you have an end, just like we talk. I'm going to send them to an announcement dialog. And what I can do there is say the announcement, which I think I have set up for this is my really important announcement right now. And then I can say uh, do another action like is this why you came by today. So let's see that in action here. So over on the right, we've got, hey, I'm Robot Downey Jr., lovingly named by Tracy many years ago. I stuck with it. Oh, we're starting over. Hold on. Filling out my pre-chat form with Christy McTesterson. That's my go-to. An agent is on the way, which means my bot is about to answer. And then I'm going to introduce myself, and I'm going to say whatever my message is. This is my really important announcement. Is this why you stopped by today? So the customer can say, yes, that is why I came by, and then go away. It never has to become a case or get transferred to an agent and waste everybody's time. We already know about this. Or they can say no and carry on with their conversation. All right, this is super cool. And I thank you for addressing my shortcomings and the things I didn't think <laughs> of. Because not only do I have a dynamic way to talk to our customers, but you allowed me to report it. And you knew I wouldn't be back in later to deactivate it. So thank you. You're welcome. On that one. All right, for this next one, I want to be the customer now. I'm going to be the customer. And I love to use the bots. And I love to select. I want to talk to an agent, and I'm a stubborn, stubborn customer. I will sit in that chat window for days, days. and get Thank frustrated you. and get angry and wonder why an agent is never coming by. So from a very stubborn customer perspective, can you shed some light on agent availability for me? I don't know if I don't know if I want to now, but yes, agent availability. So oftentimes we give customers the option to get transferred to an agent, but then it turns out there's no one there, and then they get frustrated. I've been there; it sucks, right? So we want to get rid of that scenario altogether, and we need to do that by creating an omni-channel flow. With omni-channel flows, there's an action available out of the box that's called check availability. And let's see that in action. So here we're creating a flow. We have this one action. I think this GIF is going to start over again. I don't know why it starts from the middle each time. Sorry about that. Stand by. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> All right, so you'll see we just have this one action on the canvas 
we're going to set the service channel to chat. We're going to select that we want to check the availability of our queue. And by just giving it that information, it already knows all of the queues in my org. And I can just declaratively check, yes, I want this one from the pick list. We're going to return all outputs. And I just care about the estimated wait time and the number of online agents. That's all I care about right now. That's a separate omni-channel flow. In order to use this, we need to call it as a subflow from our pre-chat context flow. Because it's never just that easy. It's never just one flow, but it's <laughs> yes, love right. a good subflow. <laughs> so here you can see we're adding this as a subflow. We do have to pass in the routable ID. Uh, that's just the chat transcript that we're working with. Oh, and it's starting over again. Where are we here? These GIFs are killing me. OK, here's our subflow again. You can see that we're storing our outputs, that we're bringing in our agents online, and our estimated wait time. I am going to check again, Tracy, to see if what? Available for output. They're available for output. Yes. That's right. If they're not available for output, I'm not going to be able to access them in my bot. So let's just give it a check, and we're good. OK. So what are we going to do with this? Again, back to our bot builder. We're going to assign these variables into our bot as bot variables. We have both our agents online and our estimated wait time. And then what are we going to do with it? We could do lots of things. Ah, did I skip a, a slide? Maybe I didn't. OK. So here we see an example of it saying, as part of the welcome message, hey, I don't have any agents online right now, but you can continue chatting with Robot Downey Jr. He can help you with option one, two, three. This is just one example of what we can do with this. We could use this logic in the middle of a chat, at the end of a chat. We could use this to dynamically display menus, so not even giving someone the option of seeing transfer to agent, because I already know that there's no one online. That is very cool. All right. As a customer, I'm feeling less angry. I thank you for that. I'm going to switch back for this last situation and be back to a service manager because, again, I really enjoyed the power. All right. I know you do. So in our org, we have service level agreements. And we want to provide customer service based on that SLA. So whether they're bronze, they're gold, they're diamond, they're triple diamond, double platinum, I want the bot to be helpful or even more helpful, depending on their SLA. Helpful or more helpful, I like that. Helpful or more helpful. <laughs> How can I make that happen? Yeah, so we can bring any data in, like we've been doing this whole time, right? So let's see how this works with an SLA. And to do that, we're just going to add a decision node to the end of our pre-chat context flow here. And all we need to look for is, does our matched contact have an SLA expiration date that's greater than or equal to today? So they have something that's active. That's all we need to do. It's literally one decision. And what we're going to do with that is go down two paths. If they do have an active SLA, I'm going to assign um, a contact item that's just bronze, silver, gold, red, white, blue, whatever your SLAs are, so that we can use that level later on in the bot. If they don't have an active SLA, I'm going to leave it blank. I'm not going to assign it at all. And the reason I did a decision here, instead of maybe just a formula, is just for scalability down the road. I know you're going to ask for something else, some other thing based on this later, so I'm leaving it open for myself. Back to the bot builder, you can see how we can use this sort of thing. So I'm in my transfer to agent dialog here, which means that someone has already clicked that transfer to agent button. And I'm looking for if my SLA level equals bronze, I'm going to send that person a message saying, hey, live chat's available to only silver people and above. <laughs> so you can take these other options, but you can't do this. You're making the bot sound a little bit salty, but that's OK. Yeah, it might go a little against what I said you know, in the previous thing, where don't play with your customers' emotions. But I decided to use this as maybe kind of an upsell opportunity. Like, hey, you could talk to a live person if you just give me a little bit more money. <laughs> so this is a great example of how you could use uh, this information. 
And you can see just another message here. You can also use this in the welcome, like, hey, thank you for being a Platinum customer. Anything you can think of. That is super cool. So we went through three scenarios here, all using the same flow, which I loved. And you helped me as a service manager. I felt a little bit more powerful. And hopefully it gave you guys ideas for how to use your bots or how to get started. Speaking of getting started, you guys have already started scanning the QR codes above. Those first two, they're actually in the incorrect order. Start with <laughs> Einstein Bots Planning. It's a great trail and trailhead gets you started with the ideas for how you use your Einstein Bot. Once you're done there, head over to Einstein Base Bot Basics and you'll be well on your path to creating really cool Einstein bots. And our last QR code is Force for Fun. Uh, Christy is, like I said, a nerd of all things Salesforce. She blogs about it and she obsesses over things that she's currently in love with. Right now, that is sure. Einstein bots and crocheting Salesforce related items. So if you head over to Force for Fun and you're passionate about learning about bots, read her blogs because she has suffered through uh, trial and error for you and wrote about the best way to build going forward. She is not lying. <laughs> That's all we've got for you today. Hopefully you guys have safe travels and enjoy the rest of Dreamforce. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching. We would love to get your opinion on this content, so please leave us some feedback on the comments section below. If you did like this content, give that like button a tap. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the Salesforce Admins YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about being a Salesforce admin in general, head on over to admin.salesforce.com. Thanks again.